Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Mesomathics Series Intro. In this video, I'll be giving an overview of some of the concepts I'm going to talk about later on in the series. Throughout the series, I'm going to assume you're able to read music as, at a basic level. Nothing too crazy like the tenor clef or 64th note triplets or anything, just treble or bass clef and basic rhythms. In the first video, I'll review some music theory basics that will come in handy later on. After that, we can start getting to the cool stuff. For the rest of the series, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of basic algebra and geometry. Often, though, you don't even need to be 100% solid on the computational nitty-gritty to get a good idea of what's going on. The more advanced concepts will come at the end of the series. Don't let the math scare you off, though. It's super cool, I promise. We're going to start off by talking about different tuning systems and the physics of musical instruments and sound waves. Later on in the series, we'll dive into Fourier analysis. We'll also talk about some interesting aspects of rhythm and meter, like expressing note durations using summation notation. This is probably the part of mathematical music theory that you're most familiar with. After that, we'll start getting into the applications of abstract algebra and one-dimensional geometry to musical pitches. Then, we'll level up into two-dimensional geometry and beyond, using things like a Mobius strip and a chordal lattice to model voice leading and harmonic progressions, harmony changes in other words. We'll look at the effects of musical operations such as transposition and inversion in higher dimensions. For example, this four-dimensional model that you see here is showing the first chord progressions in the Chopin E minor prelude. Then we move on to probability and statistics. For example, creating a probability density function to predict harmonic motions in different types of classical music and applying statistical analysis to musical data. We'll end off the series with a brief discussion of applications of dynamical systems, or dynamics, to different types of musical analysis. Finally, we're going to have a look into fractal patterns and self-similarity in multiple different areas of music, especially rhythm, meter, and harmonic progressions. Fractals provide a super interesting way to think about and to hear music, so make sure to stick around for that. That's all for this video. To see the next video in the Musimathic series or visit centerofmath.org, click right on the blackboard. Thank you for watching.